Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. First off, hopefully everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving, but it's time to jump back into that penitentiary mix. Seems like Mr. Derek Chauvin got stabbed up in prison the other day. We're going to talk about that, even though there ain't too many details on the case, but it seems like there's a lot of stuff happening from this prison, federal prison, that I had no idea happened. Some wild stuff. So before we get into the story, if you enjoy all things lockup and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, for those of y'all that might have been living under a rock for the last few years, Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer, was convicted of murdering Mr. George Floyd. But there's news saying that he's been stabbed and seriously injured recently. The attack happened at the Federal Correctional Institution in Tucson, a medium security prison that has been plagued by security lapses and staffing shortages. The person who's been giving up information on everything was not authorized to publicly discuss details of the attack and he said he'll only speak under the condition of anonymity. It seems like from what this article is saying, it's plagued by security lapses and staffing shortages. Federal prisons, you would think, would be fully equipped with everything. That's how I look at it. Better food, better security, stuff like that. That's how I've always looked at the federal prison system, even though I've never been in it. But this article breaks down otherwise. We're going to get there in a second, and like I said in the beginning, some crazy stuff's been happening in this place. But the Bureau of Prisons confirmed that an incarcerated person was assaulted at FCI Tucson around 12.30 p.m. Friday, which I'm guessing was probably around feeding time. Maybe they open up a few more doors than usual during child time. Believe it or not, that's the only time that a lot of individuals can get at people during the child movements. But that's just an assumption, right? I don't even know his lockdown status. In a statement, the agency said responding employees contained the incident and performed life-saving measures before the inmate, who it did not name, was taken to a hospital for further treatment and evaluation. No employees were injured and the FBI was notified. Visitation at the facility, which has only about 380 inmates, has been suspended. And that's typically what takes place when something major happens on the compound. Ain't no movement going on. This is a high profile case, which kind of blows my mind. I just said in a video the other day that I haven't heard any stories. It's hard to find them, actually, besides a rare few of officers, ex-former officers being attacked by other inmates because they're usually in some solid protective custody blocks. But it seems like O'Chauvin made his way, I guess, kind of the general population. I don't know. Chauvin stabbing is the second high profile attack in the federal prison in the last five months. In July, disgraced sports doctor Larry Nassar was stabbed by a fellow inmate at a federal penitentiary in Florida. Did a story on that. You can click right up here somewhere sometime throughout the video to go check it out. But with that story, it kind of shocked me as well because, you know, he's so high profile, you would think he'd definitely be in protective custody. See, that's, I, that's something I still to this day do not understand. How are some of these vicious people stuck in these PC blocks perfectly safe while others aren't? I mean, I, I could care less about having these people in there, but still, I'm just trying to break down the system of things. And it seems like even down to the courtroom, you just don't know. Every situation is different. Every establishment, every prison, every state runs their ship a little bit different. So one place keep you on lockdown for your whole damn bid. Every drip of your 35 years, whatever you're sentenced to. Another prison throw you in probably a slow-paced GP block. That ain't got that much violence, but as soon as you step in, trust and believe someone's going to become violent. With a case like his, yeah, it's guaranteed. But we'll talk more about that here in a second. Now, this is what shocked me. The second major incident to happen in Tucson Federal Prison in little over a year. In November 2022, an inmate at the facility's low security prison camp pulled out a pistol and attempted to shoot a visitor in the head. But luckily, fate had other plans. The weapon that the inmate should never have even had misfired. Nobody was injured. But that is just unbelievable. Me personally, has been through visitation numerous times. I can't even begin to think of something like that happening, honestly. That's such an extreme situation that makes you wonder about everything in that whole facility. What's been going on, right? Where's the security in this place? How does a damn inmate get a pistol? But we've heard a few stories about that throughout time. I believe the first one I ever read came from Louisiana. Old video out there on YouTube somewhere showing it. And anybody wondering how the hell could, you know, someone get a pistol in there? Unless there ain't no fences and people can kind of, you know, walk in and out of prison a little bit without nobody knowing. Then it was brought in by the police. That's a fact. You ain't smuggling that jank in your old coin purse. A lot of people think that it's just clean and cut. 
But the reality of it is there's a lot of dirty players in this game. And not to mention, you know, I was really diving into this situation. This girl's visiting the guy. So she's on the visitation list, probably been coming up there on a regular basis. I don't know. Maybe he found out that she was sleeping around and didn't say nothing until he got the burner and was just going to wipe her out right then. Because there had to have been some thought and preparation put into this. And she obviously had no idea because she went over there visiting him, probably bought him some vending machine food. Crazy, crazy world we live in. You just don't know. But Chauvin, 47, was sent to FCI Tucson from a maximum security Minnesota state prison in August 2022. Simultaneously serve a 21-year federal prison sentence for violating Floyd's civil rights and another 22 and a half year state sentence for second degree murder. Chauvin's lawyer, Eric Nelson, had advocated for keeping him out of general population and away from other inmates, anticipating he'd be a target. In Minnesota, Chauvin was mainly kept in solitary confinement, largely for his own protection. So Minnesota had him in solitary confinement. Like I said, each state runs their stuff a little bit different. He gets to the federal prison in Tucson. See, some places they're built specifically for these type of people, you know, that need to be protected. So the Tucson prison probably has, you know, one side completely dedicated to these type of individuals. And even though he's surrounded by other people that might be being protected by the state, doesn't mean that they're not going to go over there and attack him. This guy had a target on his head ever since they shown his face about the story. Guaranteed. Any place he gets locked up at, someone's going to try to get him. And I said that when we first covered the story about the situation. Last week, the U.S. Supreme Court rejected Chauvin's appeal of his murder conviction. Separately, Chauvin is making a long shot bid to overturn turn his federal guilty plea as well. But that's a bulk of it. Like I said, there ain't too many details on the stab, and I'm sure more will come out later on. Usually does with these high-profile cases. Inmates like to make a quick buck, maybe reaching out to these news crews, giving them some juicy details. But it doesn't matter where this guy's at. He's going to have a target on his head. If he's around people, the only way to keep this guy safe is solitary confinement, just like Minnesota was doing. And like I said, that's one thing that I still don't understand to this day, man. It's like some people, they get super protected. I haven't heard of any recent stories of officers being attacked at former officers being attacked in prison and boom just after i say that to y'all we got one old chauvin but that was almost guaranteed i knew that was coming just sooner or later he's got a long stretch to do you know over 20 years so that's gonna be a lot of open windows for inmates to attack not to mention a lot of prisons after a certain amount of time goes by and there ain't really no activity anymore people they think people might have forgotten a bit they'll definitely throw him into a uh, you know less secure block but as of right now for sure facts he's going straight to solitary confinement They'll probably keep him there for quite a bit of time. Some people, believe it or not, even though they know they have a probably a target on their head, uh, they can't live in solitary for years and decades. They'll end up begging the people to throw them into general population. Sometimes, man, you know, they think it's over and forgotten about as well. But this is the thing, man. Nobody forgets. Not in prison, at least. Those lifers and shit, they're going to make sure that everybody, whoever's in the prison at that time, when you get out of uh, PC or whatever, is going to be refreshed on exactly who you are. Guaranteed. Look, as soon as this guy gets released from any kind of solitary confinement or PC block, if he ever hit the main line again, an inmate's going to inform someone that he's coming. I guarantee it, man, you know, and a lot of people might be wondering, well, how is that going to happen, man? These, these inmates ain't working for the system. Well, they do. Inside of prison, a lot of inmates, they work right next to these counselors, these classification officers, and they see the paperwork. And they'll lock in certain details about people's transfers in different blocks or prisons and let the right people know. It happens all the time. So uh, this guy's got a rough ride ahead of him, man. And honestly, if I were to put all my money on the line, because I'm a gambling man, I don't think he's going to make it out of this one alive. I think another inmate's going to end up taking his life sooner or later. But one big thing you can get from this is any police officers out there doing dirt, maybe you ain't gotten caught yet, you say to yourself, if I ever do get caught, they'll just put me in a PC unit. I'll be protected because they ain't going to let no ex-former officer get got. Think again, right? We're seeing it right here firsthand. Former officer, yeah, the situation was intense. You know, had a lot of kickback from this situation all across the country. But still, there's a possibility that you could be thrown in the same type of blocks as this guy and get got as well. And, you know, I don't like violence. Right? I just don't like it, man. I try to avoid it at all costs. But it makes me feel better seeing that it doesn't matter what kind of profession a person had in the streets. They still get thrown into somewhat of a general population setting. I hate it how some people are completely protected, man, right off the break. Nah, man, they need to go through the prison system for real. And that means being around the inmates. 
If you're to ask me, that's part of the punishment. People like me got to go through it. So why can't these individuals doing these heinous crimes go through it as well? Not fair if you're to ask me, man. Secondly, what we can get from this is that federal prison systems, man, they got their own issues as well. Shortage of staffs, escapes. It seems like it's just the same as a state prison. Maybe not as bad or possibly worse in some situations. Prison's prison, right? Federal or state, doesn't matter. You're going to have your danger levels. But I'm going to wrap it up right here. Like I said, there ain't too many details on the case, but it's something that I definitely had to report on. And it's something that I definitely knew was going to happen sooner or later. I said it once, I'll say it again. The only way to keep guys like this safe is what Minnesota was doing. 23-1 and one complete solitary confinement. Genie in a bottle status. You know what I mean? Anyway, stay tuned. I got plenty more stories coming your way. This one kind of jumped the line because it was breaking news. But I'm definitely going to start cranking out more detailed and cinematic true crime stories, right? And if there's any kind of uh, recommendations that y'all might have, leave it in the comment section below and maybe I'll make a video on it. In the meantime, though, y'all tap that like, subscribe, notification bell if you enjoyed. And as always, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.